Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Ocity, Quantum Mania, Quantum something or other. It's got lots of quantum in it, that you can be sure of. I didn't have a chance to react to the last trailer. Short version, Kang looked really cool. Some of the green screen work was not so hot, and it seemed like the editors were trying to make it feel like Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know why. So I haven't watched this thing yet, but apparently the director Peyton Reed was tired of his Ant-Man movies being the palate cleanser after the big event films and wanted to do some huge blowout Avengers level thing. I'm here for it, but I'm not sure how many more gags you can milk out of the shrinking gimmick. Or maybe the point of this one is to ditch the gags and get more serious? I hope so. That's the direction I want the MCU to go in now. Getting away from the everything is a joke mentality that Taika Waititi beat to death several times over with Thor Love and Thunder. I don't know how a more serious tone would lend itself to a Scott Lang adventure. He's a strange choice for the one to introduce us to Kang, but... I'm excited to see them try. I'll say this though, if for whatever reason getting more serious means there is no giant Hello Kitty Pez dispenser in this movie, then I'm calling bullshit on this whole thing. Let's watch. You're an interesting man, Scott Lang. But you've lost a lot of time, mm -hmm. like me. What'd you do, Cassie? We can help each other with Public that. urination, I bet. Yeah. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. Time. What's that? Time. Ah! <laughs> I got it right. I can rewrite existence and shatter timelines. Still not sure about the green screen. I cannot yeah. trust him. I don't care who this guy is. I just lost so much. He can give us a second chance. Mm. Mm. I like the music much better in this one. You will bring me what I need. Oh. Everything you call a life will end. Wow. They're going much bigger this time. Whoa. What the? You may not want her to watch this. We had a deal. You don't make deals with bad guys, Scott. They never, they never keep their word. What was that? Fucking Modok? Oh shit! Oh, oh! Come on, Scott. Get up. You got this, buddy. Come on. Oh. Shit! Shit! <laughs> Damn. Okay, much better trailer than the last one. This definitely looks like the most interesting Ant-Man movie. There's stuff I'm wondering about, though. I'm still not sure why Marvel is so fascinated by this quantum realm thing. They're really going all in on this, and... It's so weird. Like, some people are speculating that the Fantastic Four are going to be in there. I don't think they will be. But where is this all coming from? Is this going to be the MCU's version of the Negative Zone or something? I thought it had kind of served its purpose after Endgame, but it seems like they're using it as a blanket excuse to pull all sorts of rabbits out of the hat now. For instance... What the hell is frickin' MODOK doing in there? I mean, it's cool. I want to see what they do with it, sure, but why is he in the quantum realm of all places? What's he doing in an Ant-Man movie? Isn't he supposed to be affiliated with AIM? Yeah, Iron Man 3 cheated us out of a proper AIM, but you can still do it. Just say the organization restructured itself or something. Beats me what's going on there, but holy shit, he looks f***ing great. Look at him, they nailed it. He's got the big fat head and the tiny limbs. He's cartoony and ridiculous and scary all at the same time. And and, and, okay, help me out here. Is that the face of the dude who played Yellow Jacket in the first movie? It looks like it, and it's interesting thematically. It would kind of bring things full circle, but 
Why? How? Is he a Yellow Jacket variant or something? Again, they're using the quantum realm to justify all sorts of crazy crap. If they can explain it, great. But they can't just play the quantum card every time with stuff like this. It doesn't apply to everything, Marvel. So Kang is offering Scott time. What does that mean? It looks like part of the story is Cassie having problems or acting out and Scott lamenting that he lost five years with his daughter, didn't get to watch her grow up. You can tell a good story with that. When Scott found teenage Cassie and realized that he lost all that time with her, that's one of my favorite scenes in Endgame. I cried at that scene. So I like that as motivation, but... What can you do with it in this sense? What's Kang offering Scott that he doesn't already have? Is he, I don't know, offering to send Scott back five or six years so he could get that time with Cassie back? Because Scott could do that himself. The Avengers have a time machine now, remember? Here's another one. Maybe he's offering to de-age Cassie back to her pre-snap age so he could still watch her grow up. But Scott could also do that himself. And I don't think he would anyway because that's up. But what else would Scott want? Here's an idea. Maybe he wants to be able to experience every possibility in every branch of reality where he did get to be there for Cassie growing up. That seems like the most plausible one I can think of, and it might explain why he's getting jacked by this army of variants here. I need more information, but Marvel are really good about not revealing stuff like that. Look at all those variants. It's like Ant... Mania. Oh, f off. Oh, Kang looks really good, you guys. Really f***ing good. Jonathan Majors is a scary dude when he wants to be. And where'd this guy even come from, anyway? I'd never heard of him before until he showed up in the Loki finale, and then suddenly he's in everything. Good for him, I guess. It looks like Kang is gonna be bad ass. And as bleak as this story seems, I don't see how Scott gets out of it. I really don't. If Scott's the reason why Kang is unleashed on the rest of the MCU, and it looks like that might be the case, I think there needs to be a price paid for that. I don't think he's gonna die. Here's what I think. I think this movie ends on a cliffhanger, with Scott's fate a big mystery. Maybe he's dead, maybe he's lost somewhere, no one knows. Then, in Avengers Kang Dynasty, he comes back, we find out where he's been this whole time, he's the one who fills the new Avengers team in on who this guy is, and he plays a key role in taking Kang down. They can't kill him yet. They can't. Scott deserves a movie where he's a proper Avenger from start to finish. After that, all bets are off, but I feel pretty safe guessing that he survives this movie. Will the new Avengers have enough quantumosity to defeat Kang the Conqueror? Only Scott Lang knows. I'm excited for Cassie to finally become stature in this film. Been waiting for that, even though the movie looks like it's gonna really screw her up. As in, emotionally, not ruining the character. I wish we had a better shot of her in the suit, though. I think that's her here. It'd be nice if she gets in on the action this time. And speaking of, it's weird to me that Marvel's been getting their ducks in a row for some kind of Young Avengers project for years now, and it still hasn't happened. I'm impressed with their patience, but that's a long damn time to prep for a team the fandom doesn't even seem that excited for. Fantastic Four and the X-Men, that's the whole conversation right now. And I don't particularly care that much either. Sure, give me more of Cassie and Kate Bishop, but I can take or leave the rest of them. But hey, the Guardians of the Galaxy weren't exactly A-listers before James Gunn came along, so who knows what'll happen with that. I can't really be sure here, but look at all these guys fighting in the background. Are those Ant-Man variants? <sighs> it's hard to tell. The color scheme looks right, though. And what if they are? Think about it. Every Scott Lang in the multiverse pours in. They're all fighting each other. Everybody shrinking and growing to giant size and sicking ants on each other. Just imagine the potential craziness of a sequence like that. And then I guess Kang just walks in and destroys them all. Party pooping asshole. This looks really cool. Some of the green screen's a little iffy still, but they're going darker and more serious. Exactly what I wanted. Kang looks awesome. We got freaking Modok in there. We're setting up Kang Dynasty. And we've got quantum! Lots of quantum! Quantum everywhere! And hopefully this is the movie where the narrative finally starts coming together. With the Infinity Saga, you knew where they were going, what they were building to, but Phase 4 has been all over the f***ing place. Feige has said that there's been a plan all along, but that hasn't really been clear yet. If we can start connecting those dots now, that's gonna help a lot. Okay, really good trailer. My interest in this movie has gone way up. Let me know what you guys think down below, and while you're here, please do all the other YouTube 
things. Ding the bell icon and follow my social media to be notified when I upload new stuff. All the links are in the description box. Thumbs up the video and leave a comment. It really helps out against that big red bastard YouTube algorithm. Share, subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, and I'll be back with more soon. Take care, stay tuned, I'll see you next time. Quantum.